In the world's wealthiest nation, why does poverty persist? A paradox, isn't it? A nation known for its wealth and prosperity, the United States, yet harboring cities where the poverty level surpasses that of some African nations. It's a conundrum that beckons for deeper exploration and understanding. Let's delve into this enigma, beginning with the concept of relative poverty. It's not about the absolute lack of resources, instead it's about being significantly behind the average standard of living in a society. It's about not being able to afford what most consider necessary to lead a normal life. In a country as affluent as the United States, this disparity becomes even more glaring. Now consider the federal poverty line the official measure that defines the minimum amount of annual income needed to cover basic life necessities. In 2023, for a family of four, this line was drawn at around $26,000. But life's necessities aren't the same everywhere, are they? Living in New York City isn't the same as living in rural Wyoming. The cost of housing, healthcare, and even food varies significantly, yet the poverty line remains the same across the board, failing to capture these nuances. As we continue to navigate this labyrinth of wealth and poverty, we encounter a city that stands out. A city with the highest poverty rate in America. You might imagine it to be tucked away in some remote corner, hidden from sight. But no, it's right there under our noses in the heart of the nation. This city is a stark reminder of the paradox we are exploring. A testament to the fact that even in the world's wealthiest nation, poverty persists. It's not about the lack of resources, but the distribution of those resources, the policies, the structures, the systems. As we peel back the layers, we find that the city with the highest poverty rate in America is not in a remote corner, but right under our noses. And that, folks, is the paradox of the wealthiest nation. To truly grasp the gravity of the situation, we need to delve into the numbers. In this city, the figures are as shocking as they are heartbreaking. Roughly one in three individuals live below the poverty line. That's a staggering third of the population living on less than the federal poverty level. A yearly income of less than $12,160 for a single individual. For families, the situation is even more dire, with approximately half of them falling under the poverty line, struggling to survive on an income of less than $26,200 for a family of four. The unemployment rates are equally disconcerting. Where the national average hovers around 4% in this city, it's a whopping three times that, 12%. That's one in every eight people without a job. To put this into perspective, let's look at the comparative figures. The national average poverty rate in the United States is a little over 10%. In this city, it's three times that. Now let's look at some African nations. In Kenya, the poverty rate is 26%. In Nigeria, it's 40%. This means that this city, right in the heart of America, is poorer than some African nations. Such extreme poverty doesn't just happen overnight, it's the result of a complex interplay of socioeconomic factors. Lack of quality education is a significant contributor with over half the city's adults lacking a high school diploma. Limited job opportunities, especially those that pay a living wage, exacerbate the situation. The high cost of housing, with many families spending more than half of their income on rent, pushes even more people into poverty. But it's not just about the numbers. Each statistic represents a human being, a life blighted by poverty. It's about the single mother working two jobs and still struggling to feed her children. It's about the elderly man unable to afford his medication. It's about the young man who can't find a job, no matter how hard he tries. The numbers reveal a stark reality, a city in the heart of America, poorer than some African nations, but what does this mean for the people living in such conditions, and why should we care? When we talk about poverty, we're not just talking about an absence of wealth. We're talking about the absence of opportunities and the dire implications that brings. Take health, for instance. In the poorest cities, access to basic health care is often a luxury. Preventable diseases are prevalent and life expectancy is significantly lower. The reality is, when you're focused on surviving, maintaining good health becomes secondary. Then, there's education. Education is a stepping stone to better opportunities. But in these poverty-stricken areas, schools are often underfunded and understaffed. Kids are not getting the quality education they need to break free from the cycle of poverty. And let's not overlook crime. Poverty and crime are intricately linked. When people are desperate and see no other way out, they are more likely to turn to crime. This doesn't excuse criminal behavior, but it does highlight the importance of addressing the root causes of crime and poverty is a significant one. 
On a larger scale, these high poverty rates perpetuate social inequality. Wealth continues to accumulate in the hands of a few, while the majority struggles just to get by. This isn't just unfair, it's unsustainable. It stagnates economic growth and fosters potential for social unrest. Think about it. When a sizable portion of the population is left behind, they're not contributing to the economy, they're not innovating, not creating, not building, and that's a loss for everyone, not just those in poverty. So, why should we care? Because poverty isn't an isolated issue. It's interconnected with every other aspect of society, from health and education to crime and social equality. We must remember poverty isn't just about lacking money, it's about lacking opportunities. In the end, the question remains. How can such deep-rooted poverty exist in the land of plenty? This paradox we've explored today is not just a tale of two cities or of wealth disparity, but a stark reminder of the social injustices that persist in our society. We've delved into facts and figures that paint a picture of a city in the wealthiest nation of the world, which shockingly is poorer than some regions in Africa. We've examined the implications of this reality, the impact on the lives of individuals, and the consequential ripple effects on our nation's economic growth. The importance of addressing these issues cannot be overstated. It is a matter of social justice, of human dignity, and of national prosperity. We must not turn a blind eye to the plight of our fellow citizens living in poverty. It's time to turn our attention to the forgotten corners of our nation and work towards a future where prosperity is not just the privilege of a few, but the right of all.